Hello and welcome to Bangalore 101, a brand new segment on Citizen Matters and I'm your host Mansi Paresh Kumar. Every week we bring to you a contentious issue that has caught the imagination of our city and this week we talk about advertising codings. Now I know most of you are going to be like, really advertising codings are contentious issues? beautiful large screen which made you fall in love with Lisa Ray as she twirled around in the saris and Milan Soman gazing down at you. Very same. In the recent past, the BBMP and the state government have locked horns on this issue and will bring you everything there is to know about it. Now, largely the argument that is being proposed presented about this issue is that it is environment and aesthetics of the city versus revenue. But is the issue really that simple? Not really. The most important question that all of you are going to be asking is, why does it matter to you? Well, for three reasons. One, safety. Two, revenue. And three, which is the most important, which is the sanctity of local governance. Now, uh, let me give you a brief timeline about it so you understand what this issue is all about. Uh, in 2010, around 2010, the BBMP woke up to the fact that a lot of these holdings were set up on rooftops of old dilapidated buildings. You walk down old Bangalore, you know, that commercial street, all of those parts. Many of them are perched on top of buildings that are at least 150 years old, 100, 150 years old. Each of these structures weigh an average for about two tons. Not very safe. Do you feel safe walking around? The BBMP didn't really feel so and they decided to start discussing about it. They discussed and discussed and discussed and nothing really happened. And that's where the matter got buried. So safety is one aspect. Now, uh, the second aspect is the revenue. This issue hit headlines in 2015 when an internal report pegged a loss of revenue at, uh, was at rupees 2000 crores for the last nine years because of illegal holdings. That's about 223 crores every year. Now, I'll just put that in context for you. The year this report was released was 2015. The advertising revenue that was collected for 2015 was 21.47 crores as opposed to the estimated loss of 223 crores. Can you imagine all the money and what it could have done to the amount of potholes we could have filled with it? I, I am imagining it because clearly there's no work being done on the ground about it. So let's imagine that. Uh, and it begs another very important question, you know, with this kind of revenue loss. If the BBMP has a way of earning this kind of money, why are they looking to increase our property tax and a very steep increase at that? Well, your guess is as good as mine. And the other and the most important aspect about this is who is governing Bangalore? Now, BBMP is solely in charge for approvals and permissions of advertisements. In 2018, the BBMP, after being pulled up by the High Court, banned flexes around the city because of the environmental concerns, because they made of plastic and all of that, and pulled them down, left the steel structures staying up. But in 2019, the UDD came in and created a separate law, which is the BBMP advertising rules and said basically it said BBMP you don't get to have a say in this the ban doesn't have to, is not going to be in place and we're going to have holdings. Now the question is we spend a lot of money electing our councillors you know, there's an election that happens if the urban development minister uh, department has to do this then why are we spending all our tax money on elections what do the councillors have to do? Because this is clearly in the jurisdiction of local governance. Now, another important uh, tidbit about this whole aspect is that B.H. Anand Kumar, who is now the Commissioner of BBMP, was actually the additional Chief Secretary of the Urban Development uh, Department when these rules were put in place to override the BBMP Council's decision to ban the opponents. So there are two questions you need to be asking 
of your elected representatives. The first question, of course, goes to the BBM. How did you lose so much of money? And what are you going to do? How are you going to deal with the officials who actually let the people get away by erecting illegal holdings and causing a loss of revenue? What are you doing about it? You should be asking these questions. The second one is to the MLAs. When you got elected, your manifestos, most of your manifestos spoke about decentralization and allowing for local governance. Was this what you were talking about? If this isn't what you were talking about, why are you letting the Urban Development Department get away with meddling in the affairs of the BBM, which has elected representatives? That's all we have for you this week. We'll be back again next week. Till then, goodbye.